Board of Directors work session this Thursday, February 8th, 2018. Thanks, community. <laughs> okay, uh, one announcement, Jeff Danner uh, will be absent this evening. Um, does any member on the board have a conflict of interest or potential conflict of interest with respect to any item on the agenda tonight? I don't see any. Um, the uh, Awasa orientation has been scheduled for newly elected Chapel Hill Town Council members on Monday, February 12th at 4 p.m. in the Awasa boardroom. Chapel Hill appointees to the Awasa board are invited and encouraged to attend this meeting. Uh, do you know how many of you will be attending that meeting? Ask you if uh, you would like me to prefer that I do or don't, but I'm available. <laughs> yeah, I, I would hope everybody um, would, well, Possibly. all the chat, chat. Plan to, okay, that's three, can't four. Okay. And Jeff Danner, indicated that he thought he would attend so with you that makes five so yeah. um, we'll have Andy make public notice yeah. that, that there may be five. That's the point for the question yeah. is whether they have public notice or, or not. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, we have an announcement by board members. Barbara, do you have an announcement? Sure. Um, so this is an update from our February 5th, 2018 Human oh. Resources Committee meeting. Um, we did meet uh, to discuss and evaluate two benefits provided to OWASA employees, retirement health benefits for new hires and deferred compensation 457 plan. After discussion, we provided staff with goals for each benefit and requested additional information to include options for consideration at our next meeting. And a doodle poll will go to all of the committee members so that we can schedule the next meeting. Thank you. Any questions? All right. John, a yeah, couple announcements. Two announcements. NERTS, the Natural Resources and Technical Services Committee, also known as NERTS, is uh, meeting Monday, February 26th at 5 o'clock in the OASA boardroom. And we will be discussing and evaluating the OASA's drought response operating protocol. And we'll have that agenda posted tomorrow. Uh, the second announcement. Uh, Ed and I participated today in the meeting of the Chatham Orange Joint Planning Task Force. I've, I've previously talked about who are the members of all that, the county and the towns and so forth. Uh, this was the first meeting. Actually, they they were in existence back in uh, up through 2009, and it kind of went in hibernation. So we're rebooting it. Uh, most of the issues won't really pertain to Owasa. They're talking about regional development and transportation and economic development and so forth. Um, we uh, basically today was about logistics, you know, how many meetings they want to have, what's the mission statement, what future topics. Um, I So, and when it, I don't know that I'll, and Ed and I will retent on a regular basis, but when they have a special topic about water, that's, that's what we'll engage for sure. Uh, the one future topic they have identified is the question of a new water supply tapping into the west side of Jordan Lake, in which we would probably figure out a way to participate in that somehow. Uh, so that should be on our collective radar. The other noteworthy thing I heard is uh, you may have seen in the news the uh, discussion about the Lakeview Mobile Home Park which is off of Weaver Dairy Road in Chapel Hill, and there's some redevelopment plans for that, which will result in a lot of uh, displaced uh, residents in the area. And, and primarily, I, I understand they're low-income residents. So the county is working on some plans to uh, potentially set aside some property for the relocation of those residents that would be county-supported, and they may... Uh, you know, as part of the, uh, the county and the town, I would say, uh, that we may be asked to extend our service boundaries or there may be some establish, establishment of a community water, or, water service for that area. So it's, it's a long ways off, but in case you bump into people, you'll know about this and, and uh, can, can engage with them on that topic. Okay, thank you. Um, John? 
Have they identified an area for the um, new res residential uh, occupation? They have. I can't precisely point you to it. I believe they have some open space, some green space, uh, a fairly large park, maybe as you know, uh, the, but they feel like they could set aside 10 acres of that for uh, creation of a new mobile home park mm -hmm. that might permit uh, tiny homes on wheels or mm -hmm. other types of uh, uh, residential units. Okay. Yeah, I haven't personally been involved. Mary Dar, have you been in the meeting where I think off Millhouse Road heard any staff level discussion about this? Hi, Mary Dar, Director of Engineering and Planning. Um, yeah, so I wasn't at the meeting you guys attended earlier today. I have, there is a park site off of Millhouse Road. Um, I, I believe the county owns it or might be in joint, joint ownership, but that I think might be one of the locations. I think they've been tasked with looking at several locations throughout um, the service area, but don't know much more about it than that. I, I know the, the park site um, was one of the, the areas off of Millhouse. Thank you. All right, uh, Ray, you have a mm -hmm. I will provide Awasa's annual update to the Orange County Board of Commissioners on Tuesday, February 20th at 7 p.m. at the Southern Human Services Center in Chapel Hill. The update will include items from the January 2018 annual report to the local, to the local governments. Todd Taylor and Bob Morgan will also attend. Uh, board members, do you have any other board members have announcements? We'll go to the consent agenda. Uh, we only have one item on the consent agenda, and that's the uh, January 11th minutes. If there's no questions about those minutes, can I have a motion to approve? Yo, I, I guess so. Oh, motion you make to the motion? Make the motion, yeah. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> second. Thank you. We have a first and second, Rushir and Yinko. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay, no nays, passes. All right, we now move to the uh, regular agenda. And the first item on the agenda is response to petition from a WASA customer, Michael Potter, regarding the wa water meter at his residence. Call on Stephen Winters, Director of Finance and Customer Service. Uh, Mr. Potter, Stephen will speak first. Okay. And I will call for public comment in a little bit. Thank you. Um, so in your packet, I know you saw that uh, I gave a written response to my, Mr. Potter's petition that was presented at our last uh, board meeting. So I'll just summarize a few things here. Um, Mr. Potter reported that there was high use at his residence for three consecutive months back in 2007. That matches the records that we show. Um, and he asserts that the meter at his house has been, if I understand correctly, has been over-registering since that time, since 2007. We replaced the meter about a year ago, January of 2017. Um, and there was, there was some confusion or, or uh, misunderstanding about, I admit misunderstanding is not the right thing, but we were uh, to test, go back and test the meter when we brought it back. And, we don't have a record of having done that. That's again, that's included in the uh, in the memo. But but Mr. Potter, um, you know, again asserts that the meter meter had been over registering. So uh, in an attempt to work things out, we issued a credit uh, totaling about three hundred ninety five dollars to uh, the account. It's made up of two components. One was a, a what we call emergency water loss adjustment for those months back in two thousand and seventeen where there was high usage recorded. Normally we would have done that back then, but um, uh, it, it didn't didn't happen. And then uh, the second component of it was to making some kind of, of uh, allowance for Mr. Potter's assertion that the meter had been over registering. We don't have any records uh, that would prove that one way or the other, but as kind of a good faith way of working, trying to work something out, we did issue a credit for $270. Uh, how we came up with that is listed in the in the memo. If I understand correctly, Mr. Potter's uh, petition makes two requests. One is that that the adjustment that we calculated, so $270 that I just mentioned, be adjusted using the actual 
water rate that he paid, not in his understanding what the lowest tier, you know, in the block rates. Um, and that actually, uh, there was some misunderstanding about that. We actually did use the rate that was that he actually paid. So essentially we've met that, that request. The second request, again, if I understand correctly, is that we, instead of adjust for a three-year period, which we have done, that we adjust his account for a, a 10-year period. And I've put in the, in the memo expectations about what that, you know, what that adjustment like that might look like. So I'm happy to answer questions, but that's that's the kind of a summary I wanted to share with you. Okay, um, invite uh, Mr. Potter up now. Thanks, Steve. What I've done is have a lengthy memo, and I've gone back to the beginning simply because. Um, we feel like there's kind of some misstatement about what really happened. So I thought we could read through this together and then if you have any questions. Um, I first called Ms. Battle November of 2007 because of the large bills. There were three months in a row. She said, you probably have a leak in your home. And she said she would send a technician out to check for a leak in our home. And that's all that we did. I went into the house, turned off the main water valve in the house, went back out where the technician was. There was no motion whatsoever on the little red triangle. So there was no leak. That's all that they confirmed. The technician who came out then did not field test the meter's accuracy, nor did he check for any leaks in the meter. And I. OWASA has not provided me any record that they actually tested the meter in 2007. <clears throat> now, I'm not tying that incident to what happened once we got the meter replaced 10 years later. And I had explained to both Ed and to Steve that, the, you know, the, in, in Steve's memo, he was saying, well, you've never provided an adequate explanation of why there was the leak when it happened. And I had understood that I didn't have to prove that, but I did su surmise. We had, as you'll see in here, we had an unsupervised teenager next door who was at home all the time. And he got into a lot of trouble while he was there. He went to a neighbor, the next neighbor over from us and opened up the valve while they were in Europe and flooded the house. And then he, um, went down and set fire to two houses around the neighborhood, and they finally caught up with him. We were gone in this period when we had the high usage. My father was in his last weeks, and we were down taking care of him. And he, he passed away the first week of November, came back, and I saw the bills, and that's when this started. My um, request for the meter, it was actually installed February 2nd, not January is, is stated in the staff memo. When your technician Moriarty came out to actually test the old meter, we very much disagreed on what the starting and finishing points were on the readings. <clears throat> and he assured me, look, this is just a field test. We'll test it in the shop. We'll get an accurate reading. And now the position in the memo is, quote, we do not have a record of a test being made. So I take those words to, to mean simply that they failed to do the shop test. Then Owasa has told me that they destroyed and recycled the meter. I had actually offered to pay for an independent test of the meter, but of course that chance was lost once they took it back to the shop. At this point in time, this was a critical step to determine the correct refund to us. And in the absence of that, the only thing that we could really do is to make a comparison of after the new meter was installed, what the readings were versus those readings before. And Steve agreed with me that that would be a good policy to go. It, he gave it to me in, <clears throat> pardon me, in writing. You have one minute left. Well, I have a bad cold. And <clears throat> so we agreed on that. He's, he's come up with the numbers of 3,500 gallons a month. And then for the 10 months after it was installed, it was 2,600 gallons per month. 
Those are Steve's numbers. If we extrapolate that over 10 years, the result is approximately 108,000 gallons. <clears throat> and then the other thing was under this section of account adjustments, there's two standards that Steve sets out. We've met both those standards. We've provided an explanation of what happened in 2007 when there were the large bills. And second of all, we have provided, um, you know, we've got information now that the new meter is there of exactly how much the overage has been. And I've done the calculations for you using his, his chart, his numbers, and uh, the bottom line is, is that if we, and I went back today, Steve, and went through every month and, and figured out what the average usage was. But I calculate that the total refund, approximately $125 for, I thought it was mine, $125 for the, the three months that, the two out of three months back in November of 2007. And then, um, can you wrap it up, Mr. Parker? Yes, sir. And about $1,400 for the 10 years um, that we had the overage. Questions, please. Board members have uh, questions of Mr. Parker. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Back in 2007, you had those three very high months, mm -hmm. but they were erratic. You know, it was up and down quite 15, a bit. 15, 14, 11. Yeah. So it seems like you have a plausible explanation this uh, mischievous teenager may have done that. Criminal teenager. Do you, do you feel that Awasa has, has co uh, compensated you fairly for that particular episode? No, no, but uh, you know, I don't know what standard he used there in terms of the, the gallons. I, I'm sure that there was a lot more charge than uh, $125, $124 for three months for 40,000 gallons. Did I, did I understand you correctly? Um, so you think that you shouldn't be charged anything for that water, even though you use well, it? I mean, it, it was used. So yeah. are you suggesting that everyone in the system should have to pay for that water? I mean, the, the credit was obviously because it wasn't going into the sewer system, right? So that's the same way that we would, would treat any other leak. But are you arguing that you shouldn't be charged anything for that usage? No, I'm just trying to abide by the policy that was in place in 2007. When I called Battle, she said she would issue a credit for that water. She did not. Then when I talked to her in 2000, early 2017, she said, well, I was supposed to call back. A senior management person here at Wasa told me that was not the policy. She should have issued the credit. In 2007, the Wasa policy, as I understand it, Ms. Payne, is that if there was an overage, they would give you a one-time credit or whatever the water cost was. And of course you got charged for sewer too. John? Well, it may be helpful if we just keep this separate from the 2007 events and sort of the 10 year I'm period. with you. Yeah, okay. So with respect to the 2007, you haven't received that, That well, you've received a check, but you haven't cashed it. That's I absolutely correct. So are, are you comfortable that the check you have been offered with respect to 2007 is a fair implementation or maybe even a generous implementation of the current policy that OASA has? There, the check is for approximately $125 for 40,000 gallons of water and then the sewer charge on top. I don't have access to what I was actually charged. I can't really make that judgment. Okay, well, I, I, I see the information that yeah. they provided and I, I sort of understand how the calculation works and in my mind it's, uh, it's it's the right calculation. In fact, it may be generous because it's covering a longer period of time, perhaps, and maybe than we ordinarily would in no, terms of a then, leak. My understanding was in 2007 that if you had an outage or you had an overage like we had, that you could get credit for the entire amount, and it was a one-time mm -hmm. arrangement. I don't know who has been here. Who, who else was here in 2007? Were you Good. here, Ed? What was the policy? Andy, can you call up the policy we had in 2007? And if we're not able to, to answer that, certainly we can circle back. But yeah, Stephen, but do you? You had another question, sir. About I mean, I, if you had, you were going to move. Okay, to the, well, we'll the wait. Ten-year period. Sure, I'll, I'll I'll start with that. Uh, 
Uh, as far as the 10 year period, I guess from my point of view, I don't hear a clear, I mean, we're talking about, if I do the math here, uh, I think you're claiming that there was uh, 84,000 or how many gallons, 84,000 gallons over 10 years, which is approximately, I mean, over 10 years, there's 90, I'm sorry, there's there's 120 months, so. This was actually 110 months, I believe. Okay, so, uh, I eliminated so, so we're talking month. about less than $1,000 a month, and I can't, and so I'm not sure you've made an argument that I, I I feel comfortable with that that wasn't just, you know, 800 extra gallons a month of your normal usage, because I have got to think that meters are pretty accurate, and, you know, so yeah, I. But the, the dramatic change. Uh -huh. Once the meter was installed in February of last year, yeah, and we've I understand. gone from three, using Steve's numbers, we've gone yeah. from three and a half on average to 2.6. The other thing, John, please understand, that whole period, nine out of those 10 years, there was no one in the house during the day. Mm -hmm. Both my wife and I were working. We were out of the house. We're now there. We're using water all day long. Mm -hmm. And it's still coming in at two to three thousand gallons instead of anywhere from three to five thousand gallons. And and I, I sympathize. I in fact I I'm uh, you know have had my own experiences. I'm a, uh, one of the few shareholders of Owasa because it's a public utility. But I've I've paid uh, thousands in for a water uh, issue myself in a new home that I didn't pick up for years and. You know, we have a policy and we have to implement it consistently. So I think above you, all to me are that- Are you asking me for representation to bring your issue before the board? No, 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 I, I, I did that myself. And, uh, and you know, I faced uh, certain policies and, uh, you know, so the question would be, do we- If they had come out and tested the meter in 2007- Thank, Thank you, I'm, I'm all done, Mr. Chair. I wouldn't be standing before you tonight. Okay, is there any other questions from the board of Ms. Brown? Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Potter. Um, questions for Steve? Mr. Potter, could, I'm sorry, we do have a question for you. So um, I'm assuming this was, you said 2007. Is there a reason why you didn't bring this before the board back then? I was told by Ms. Battle I would get the credit. Okay. That whole period from September to the end of December, my father died. We were dealing with family issues. It didn't really cross my mind that I'd never been credited. There was nothing that was sent to me that ever showed that it was credited. And it was nothing that would have, you know, I just got my regular bills. Those bills got paid whether I was at home or not. So. And you said you received the check that you didn't cash. What was the date? Do you remember the date on the check? I the. That check was sent with a letter to try and just end the dialogue I was having with the WASA about this issue. This, that, this it hasn't been recently. It hasn't yeah. been cashed. This, this is a recent check, and it, I think we have a copy of the letter that came with that in our materials, right? It's a recent check. What date? I mean, I've got it. I probably got it in that. We're, we're not talking about a 2007 check, right? Oh, no. We're talking about right. 2017. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it seems that the uh, these three high months in uh, 2007 have nothing to do with subsequent mm -hmm. events. And no. so, anyway, no. that's been calculated, and <clears throat> Awasa has reached a decision on how to compensate you for that. So, during that period after that, uh, those high readings were over and you were back to normal. Did it, did it ever occur to you that you were being billed for more water than you were using? Right, and I brought it up, I brought it up, I brought it up a number of times and each time I was told, well, you must have a leak somewhere in your house. And I hired uh, plumbers on two occasions to come in over that 10 year period and go through and look everywhere. And we had already installed, you know, 1.6 gallon toilets, shower head savers. It just didn't make any sense. Then we would get the new meter, then we're starting to get usage for two people at home all the time that is a thousand gallons a month less than an average. Well, I, I, this, this maybe didn't sink in the first time I read this, but 
the fact that you uh, repeatedly contact a contacted Awasa during that roughly 10-year period right. and did a lot of plumbing uh, improvements to try to get your uh, numbers down. To me, that is a, a strong point in your favor and that you were trying to resolve the problem. And, and sir, again, and what, what this gentleman, Mr. Young, was raising is we really didn't have a standard. If, we, if they tested the meter as promised, we would have a standard. We would know how much it, the variance really was. But we don't have that. So after the meter was destroyed, Steve and I agreed we'll look at the we'll go we'll go out six to twelve months, see what the uses is, and then we'll use that as the standard. And that's what he's done. We're we're not that far apart. I'm just using the nine hundred gallons over that period of time. And but it's not what I don't understand is why we should go back ten years. Because if the two thousand seven incident was completely separated from the usage, then I don't understand why 2007 is- Because they didn't test the meter in But they had no reason to test the meter yes, in- Yes, they did. Not in 2007. Yes, they did. No, if, you if, if you didn't, no if you didn't have a leak, or if, if you thought it was a leak, just because you have a, a high usage doesn't mean that we automatically should test the meter if when you turn it off, there's no water going through it. So to, in my mind, I don't see any reason why 2007 the, the, is the right time to go back to because there's no reason besides these three high bills that have some completely unrelated cause that doesn't have anything to do with the meter, according to you. I don't, I well, don't see... Well, it probably had everything to do with the meter. No, you just said it didn't. You said it had to do with a criminal activity of a, a teenager. I said they asked for some plausible reason, and I had no plausible reason other than I was out of town, we had a criminal in the neighborhood, he could have come and opened the valve while we were gone. It doesn't really matter. When, well, no, it, it when, does. Excuse me, let me finish, please. When the technician came, the only thing we did was shut off the water to the house to see if there was any consumption of water inside the house. Mm -hmm. We look at it, there's no consumption there. And the logical thing, I said, what do you do to test the meter. He said, well, we don't need to test the meter. If they had tested the meter then, we would have discovered it was faulty. Mr. Potter, um, after the, the three real high months, uh, what was your consumption after that? With four, five, six. I mean, the, that's what I charted earlier, and, and, and Steve's charted the same thing, but he just did it for three years. And originally, I was told by Steve and by Ed that they could only go back three years. When Steve wrote his memo, it shows you have the authority to go back 10 years. So all we're doing is taking the three-year plan that he proposed and extending it back for the whole period. Any other questions? So we don't have a co copy of... What do you need? The check? Yeah, do, you, do you all have a recollection of what the policy was? I mean, we, we certainly can research that, but um, staff believes we've given Mr. Potter, you know, every benefit of the doubt regarding the conversation with Denise Battle in 2007. And, um, and while, you know, I can't say with any certainty what she said or didn't say or how responsive she was, but she has a long track record with all of our customers of being super responsive and keeping detailed notes. And that's not to say we didn't drop the ball in this case, but my point is um, meeting with Mr. Potter, we, we thought it was fair and reasonable to give him the benefit of the doubt and give him the credit that we would apply to customers now, even over a longer period of time of three months. You know, I think the policy might be I mean, we went back longer than the, than the 10 years, but the policy at the time, I think, might have only applied for 30 days of overage, and we applied it to three full months. So, um, and regarding the more recent um, uh, situation, again, we think we've fairly and consistently applied the policy. And, Stephen, I certainly invite you to um, correct anything I might have said or didn't say. Uh, there's the, part of the confusion is there's two different policies. The 
the policy on emergency water loss in the cases in this case where it wasn't really an explanation um, the calculation is all the water that passes through the meter is there's a charge for that it's just charged at the lowest block rate and that's what that's that's how the $125 adjustment that's in the memo was calculated and there's some time limits around around that um, you can only have one of those adjustments every three years the uh, if we make a billing error and this is in the memo there's some rules about limits on how far back we can go to back bill someone and how far back we go to refund someone and that was changed fairly I don't know within the last few years um, so uh, but, so we but, can go back 15 years we can go back forever there's no limit on I, I that may be 15 years actually what, what, whatever if what's, I said in, in, the, the what's menu, in the met your memo is 15 that's years. accurate then okay um, so um, but but I'm with uh, Heather the, um, I, I don't know why we go back to 2007 because the the there's it's it's I can't tell you how unlikely it is that a meter would be malfunctioning and record three months of you know high, high usage that high um, so we the, the second part of that memo the 200 or the, the credit the $270 that was I went back three years just because I thought that was fair it, it didn't have anything to do with a with a policy um, yeah you know, I already said that we didn't we don't and Ed has mentioned it we didn't have a way to prove one way or the other that the meter was accurate or wasn't accurate so that's how we uh, attempted any other questions Steve. Hi, Steve. I have a question. Okay. So, in, in my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the 124 was for the the one time credit of every three years for high water consumption? For, for the 2017 three months, yes. Okay. 2007, so, sorry. And then the 270 was for the, the overage for a three year period? It was for. Yeah, it, it, it was to make some kind of an adjustment to um, meet Mr. Potter somewhere in, in the in between on on what what he was asserting was had been an uh, you know an over read over registering situation, um, and what we we couldn't prove one way or the other. And that would that be under the billing or service record errors? Okay. Yeah. Um. John and then Rashir. Uh, I guess uh, putting aside the 2007 event, I think that's pretty well contained. Um, during that period since then, uh, Mr. Potter apparently contacted Owasa several times to uh, try to find out, uh, you know, why his water use was so high. And he had plumbers uh, come to his house to put in more efficient uh, devices. And so then when finally he got the meter changed in 2017, <coughs> He wanted to get the meter tested, and Awasa said, we will test it. Okay, Awasa either forgot it or lost it or something. So I think that's, uh, you know, Awasa had made a commitment to test the meter, and due to some internal problem within Awasa, it didn't happen. So, Stephen, uh, I think you described that you, given that we can't test the meter, the only approach is to take Mr. Potter's water use after the new meter was put in, and compare it to the previous period. So did you make any um, assurances to him? You know, in other words, if his water use now is much lower than it was, that would indicate a possible meter problem. Did you indicate to him how far back you would go to make a, con a correction? Or was that not defined? I recall having done so, no. Okay, thank you. I was told, and I, I'm sure it's just an oversight by Stephen. I was told they could only go back three years. That was, but then when he issued the memo, that that's because the, that's what I the think? previous policy was, which we have recently changed. Okay, well then I'm here under the current policy, correct? I'm here under Ms. Payne. I'm here under the current policy, right? And that's what the memo outlined was that you could actually go back 15 years. I could. I thought about that, and I thought, out of fairness, I don't want to raise that issue to go back even further. I don't know when that meter was actually installed, but it was before 2007. 
So I'm just coming forward from that. So I'm not sure if Steve answered this or somebody else answers this. Is there a record of what the water usage was before 2007? So like our billing history. Yes, we go back to our, our history goes back to 1999. Yeah. So going back that far, was there any <clears throat> like huge variances between water usage up until those three months, September through November of 2007? Make sure I understood your okay. question. Was so there what? was it was it normal? Uh, and then all I, of a sudden September? It's just un unfair to hold up, but this is the 2007 incident, and this is prior. So it was all over. And that's, that's a 10 year period, so there's a lot of months in there. But um, yeah, it was, it was quite uh, varied. And then uh, since that 2007, it's between three, almost every month between three and 4,000 gallons. There's a couple of months in there with five. Uh, Rashir, you had asked to. Okay, John, and then. Yeah, I wonder uh, Ray. If, if staff has any information about meter uh, inaccuracy, how often we have meters fail and not in a catastrophic way, because that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a meter that's misregistering by whatever, 25% or something like that. I can only repeat what it, what. Um, Ms. Potter's referred to David Moriarty a couple of times. David's been in our meter shop was a child. Um, <laughs> and he says, he, he, he explained to me that the type of meter that is there, which is possible, um, he's never seen one register outside the 97 to 103 range, which is industry tolerant. It's, a, it's I don't know if I'd say extremely rare is, is, is uh, accurate, but he's you know, that it's not, he's never seen it. Go ahead. That's the, that's the reason that when David was there and we were looking at the two meters together, there was a, di he thought there was a different starting point than what I had observed. And, and as he was finishing up, he said, don't worry about it. We'll, sh we'll do this in the shop. I immediately called Mrs. Battle and I said, we've had this conversation. He's bringing the meter in. I want to make sure that it gets tested. And she said, I'll get back to you as soon as we have the test result. I didn't hear from her for six weeks. So then I called Steve because I was told that he was her supervisor. Mm -hmm. And I'd reached a dead end. I had offered to have it independently tested. Because it just didn't fit with our lifestyle. With no one home during the day, using 4,000 gallons. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, Ray, Ray, I'm sorry. So it seems to be that what you're saying is that you should have been using the 2.6 thousand gallons a month. Or less. And what Stephen's saying is that you were actually billed for three and a half to four. Well, if you used three and a half, that's something like 35% over what you're, that's an incredible malfunction of a meter if it's going to register that much more. I just don't believe that happened. Well, but could it possibly have been the wrong gear or something over on top of it or the wrong scaling factor in the computer or it was multiplying it wrong? Is that a possibility? I, the, a positive displacement meter won't read 35% more than unless the gears in there are wrong or, or there's a scaling factor wrong in the computer when, I mean, the meter reader reads numbers and puts it in the computer and then there's a scaling factor applied. Is that a possibility? The scaling factor is on digits. So it would be 10 times, if there was a problem with that, it would be 10 times 
whatever the reading would be. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, so the, um, the meters have, you know, digits. Um, they go up to 10,000, I think it is. And there are certain meters that if in the in the billing system, they, they might read less than that, than that those five digits. Mm -hmm. And so the in the billing system, you put a, a multiplier to adjust based on what the reading is, what the, it should actually be billed. I'm probably not playing this. Um, but if that is off, then instead of it billing 1,000 gallons, it's going to bill 10,000 gallons. Or if it's if it reads 5,000 gallons, it's going to build 50,000 gallons. Those are pretty easy to catch. Um, it wouldn't be the 2.6 versus the 3.5 or whatever. Yeah, one more. <laughs> I was sent to this board for oversight for what's gone on for 10 years after my conversation with, with Ed. Mm -hmm. It's... It's a little um, frustrating that I did everything I knew how to do to get this problem solved for now 11 years. And I don't think it's very fair to go and say, well, meters only normally read this. When you had an actual situation where he could have tested the meter, and I'm being penalized because he did not test the meter. I'm being penalized. I'm being asked to pay for water that I never used because he didn't test the meter. It's very odd that they didn't test the meter. Can anybody explain to me why they didn't test the meter? I don't think there's an answer to that question. Okay, thank you. John? Mr. Potter, I would like to express my sympathy. I, I think your last statement is not quite Right. I mean, what Owasa has said is, while we believe the meter is accurate, we are going to hand you a check for the difference over the past three years. And I think that's an approach to say, uh, yes, we didn't test the meter. We didn't meet the customer service expectations. And so that's, that's a, a payment that we wouldn't make to any other customer, but for the fact that we didn't test that meter as was recommended. Um, and I think it's unfortunate we didn't test the meter. However, I also think a, a three-year payment is a, a, a give end of the circumstances that meters don't fail as far as I can hear tonight. Um, and so I sympathize. I feel like the, I, I feel like Owasa has made a, a, an outcome that is fair and other board members may disagree with me. I think it's fair and uh, with that, I would like to make a motion to deny your petition and hope that you will accept the, uh, the check that we have provided to you. Is that a motion, John? Yes, that's a motion. Uh, I made the first. Did you second it? What? Okay, I'm sorry. Is there a second of that motion? Second. Second by Heather. Discussion about the motion? Yeah, question here. I, I, so I'm looking at it as a as a two part request. So I need clarification on is it both requests or are we able to take it one request at a time? Because I think we're dealing with two separate issues, um, even though it occurred at the same time. Well, his mo John's motion would cover both both issues. That we like separated. One being the three months, the other one being the ten. Any other discussion or question? Uh, yeah, so you, you're requesting fair rate for the thousands of gallons of overage to be calculated and to be refunded for the entire 10-year uh, period, um, negating the three-year rule since you brought the attention in 2007. How much money? <laughs> 
Okay, and you've received how much from Owasa so far? But you received it. Received the check. Uh, like, what's the total of them, even though you didn't cash? Some dollars. Oh, okay. I have one clarification. This letter that you wrote to us, is this for a 10 year period or three year period? This last one. Uh huh. Yeah. The one Where you, you just handed How out. you came up with your calculation. On the last one that he sent, yeah, that he passed around. So I guess Stephen, I'm not sure if you've had a chance to review this letter, but I would like a. I'm looking at calculations, and I'm not sure how they came about. So I'd like. Steve's calculations were for 84,000 gallons over the 10-year period. Is that correct, Steve? Let Stephen answer his calculations. So I want it's going to be easy to get confused here. Would you? I want to make sure I answer the right question. Okay. So I'm looking at one amount that was done by Awasa, and it has a calculation. But then I'm looking at this other calculation that Mr. Potter provided, and it has a different set of calculations. So I guess I'm trying to figure out the differences and where those calculations occurred. So in the the $395 that we've talked about that we that we've uh, issued $270,000 $270 of that is due to the the um, disagreement on the meter reading, okay? And to the, the way that was calculated was based on 21,000 gallons being charged that that um, we we're crediting. For a three year period. Right, for a three year period. And Mr. Potter, your calculations are for a 10 year period? Uh, right, and I'm using his number. I'm using the differential of the numbers that he calculated between 3.5 gallon, 3.5 thousand gallons versus 2.6, 900 gallons a month over, it's not even a 10 year period, it's 110 months. I ruled out the months that had the big overage because it's making an allowance for that of $125. Let me ask you one other follow up question. During the 10 year period, um, how often have you contacted Hawassa about this? Every, every year, every year I have called and talked to them. People in the service department talk to battle, talk to the to the guys who come. We have a um, manhole cover in our right away in front of the yard, and they're out there once a year. So I've gotten to know some of the some of the crew, but I've but I have specifically contacted the office here at least once a year. Do you have a question? Yeah, Thank you, Mr. Potter. Uh, we have a motion on the floor, which is second. Any further discussion? About okay, all those in favor? I'm sorry. Yeah. I think the main issue is just um, whether we compensate Mr. Potter for three years or for approximately 10 years. That's the real issue. And I think Mr. Potter would be happy with. Um, Stevens method of calculating the average over cost. I'm, I'm not going to vote for this motion because um, I think Mr. Potter has made uh, substantial efforts to get an answer to why his water use is so high. <clears throat> and secondly, um, Awasa assured him that they would test the meter and due to some error that didn't happen. So, so for that reason, I'm just going to vote no. Okay, Heather. So I, there just is nothing that I can see that says that this meter was wrong for 10 years. There's a lot that can happen in 10 years. Um, the original petition that we got only mentioned contacting Owasa in January 2013 after 2007, and then again um, in February of 2017. Um, it, I think that this is 
more than fair given that it there doesn't seem to be anything that would say that the meter was over more than what the field test would have said, which was approximately 2%. Um, and Except I don't think there was a field test. Yeah, there was a field there test. Was a field yeah, test. Yeah, there was a field test. Yes. Disagreement about the field test. I realized that there was a disagreement, but honestly, until I got on this board, I didn't know how to read my meter either, even though I had had personally issues with high month readings, you know, like four summers in a row, right? So. I agree with John. I feel like our, our customers done everything that we could possibly have done for 10 years, and I don't think that Owasa has done great customer service to for us for him. So I'm also voting down. Thank you. Okay, so I have a question with regards to which policy year we are in. So I understand this is now the policy is 15 years, right? You go back 15 years, but back at when it occurred, what was the policy period? And if it was different, was now that the position has come to us, which rules are we using when we make our determinations? We use the more generous rule. And, and I also would like to add, while we certainly respect Mr. Potter and understand, we do not agree on all the, what he's asserted about regular contacts whose court the ball was in as far as providing information, responding. So, you know, if the board would like more information from our billing system regarding our records of when we were contacted, our records on how we responded and our efforts to work with Mr. Potter will do. And, and as has been said, you know, we agreed to the three-year credit, even though we strongly believe those meter readings were accurate, but um, we did drop the ball according to Mr. Potter, as far as the test, and um, it disappointed me too that that wasn't done. Uh, I, I think it's so highly unlikely it would have proved the meter was wrong. Nevertheless, you know, we told a customer we'd do something we didn't follow through and do it. And that really was the basis why we provided the credit we did over a three year period. But, you know, um, there, we don't agree on some of the facts that you've heard tonight. Jacob? So with regards to um, the people who could potentially make a no vote, I guess I need to ask, is this no vote to say that his, he's being compensated for a different time period? Like, are we, is it a no to agree to pay a different fee than what was already provided. If you vote against the uh, policy, the, well, the motion is to uh, take the staff's recommendation. So it would just be for the three, uh, three years plus the settlement on the, on the no vote would be done, something different than that. John? I have a couple of que new questions. The uh, when the meter was tested, and we found the two percent over registering. What what year was that? Was that you were... that that was twenty seventeen? Um, it was field right. tested and found to be two percent. So it's not okay. And uh, and uh, I I am. Set it up. He thought, you know, it's like a clock. One meter is at nine o'clock, and one meter is. At, he tried to get them all at, both at twelve o'clock. He ran, a, I don't know how many gallons. He ran a few gallons out. When he stopped, the needles were fifty percent apart. That's not a two percent differential. It doesn't matter whether he ran a hundred gallons or a thousand gallons. I'm sure he didn't run that. They were. They were, so, they were 180 degrees apart. 
And, know, and I, and I, I, I assume and that it's the digits disagree. that matter, not the dial, right? He did not disagree with me on the spot. He mm -hmm. said, don't worry, we'll shop test it. Thank you, Mr. This is 2017. Okay, got it. Yeah. And so uh, I, I was interested. So, so basically, the answer is it was either 10 years or zero years or somewhere in between. And, and you know, so the, if we believe the meter has been accurate or roughly accurate, true answer is zero years. And so we're, you know, for all the disappointment in our service and responsiveness, you know, the three years is kind of the, uh, the compensation for that. Uh, um, but Ed, I am curious, I was going to ask about the, if, if you can characterize without sending us back for another month, what kind of interactions we've had over this 10 year period. Yeah, Stephen, I, I don't know how prepared we're to do that tonight, um, but in our billing system, it is standard practice that any and every time a customer service rep has a conversation or communication with a customer that is logged in the system. I don't know that we have that back to 1999, um, but certainly we have a lot of records. So, you know, we can provide the board additional information and documentation. Um, and as I said, there's Mr. Moriarty and Mr. Potter do not agree about everything that was said in the, in the field. And again, we believe we've given Mr. Potter every reasonable benefit of the doubt in the situation that happened 10 years ago and then more recently in that we've tried to, to balance our responsibilities to fairly and equitably you know, and, um, administer our pr procedures and practices on behalf of all customers while also um, you know, compensating Mr. Potter for uh, you know, less than our expectations in some aspects of our interaction together. But um, you know, ag again, it's it's unfortunate. Uh, certainly, we could have and should have done things better, um, but, but I don't think it's fair to the entire rate pays to provide him $1,500 that that I think he owes, you know, the system. Thank you. Any other conversation before we take vote on the motion? All those in favor of the motion, uh, because repeat the motion. John, <laughs> I, I guess, uh, Bob, you said the motion in a more elegant way, which is to accept the staff's recommendation that we compensate for the leak. I, I, I mean, period, we accept the staff's recommendation, which is the check that has already been issued to Mr. Potter. And then just to describe that, that includes both parts. One part is to compensate for the leak at some, you know, uh, appropriate rate for those three months back in 2007. And the other is to compensate in sort of a goodwill gesture, and if you will, if you believe that the meter is accurate, a goodwill gesture that is three years worth of, of uh, the usage above his current usage times the appropriate rate. So denying the petition. Denying the and petition the for, to, go, to extend that back oh. to 10 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. So in denying the petition for accepting is what it Um, I guess this is going to be a split vote. Let's show hands. Um, all those in favor of the motion, raise their hand. All those opposed? So it's um, five to three. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Potter, for coming. Um, that's not the answer that you want. All right, our next item. <coughs> item number two, no, excuse me, item number three, affordability program update. Uh, Mary Tiger, sustainability manager. Good evening, I have my timer. I'm going to find the reset button somewhere up here. Good evening, board. I really appreciate the opportunity to um, provide you an update on the affordability outreach program and plan and seek your feedback and input on the proposed strategies for the coming year. Got my timer. I got 10 minutes. Tip-offs in one hour. <laughs> <laughs> try to be brief. 
but this is a really important topic, so I also don't want to um, slight it. As most of you all know, we are not able to discount um, our rates or our services based on a customer's ability to pay. Uh, we are guided by cost of service principles. Um, a few years ago, um, OWASA staff and the board identified kind of a win-win strategy, um, which is to advance water conservation and efficiency as a means to sustainably reduce bills of customers that are having difficulty paying for their water and sewer bills. Excuse me. And it's in many ways a kind of a win-win, win-win. So it's a win for the environment. Um, it can be a win for OWASA customers when they're able to reduce their bills. Um, it's a win for OWASA in that it reduces our costs. Um, and it's a win in that it has uh, really granted us a really meaningful platform to engage um, with our community and the social service agencies that serve our community. Um, in the development of the program, we identified two goals. Roni, there, okay. Uh, that is to increase community awareness of options to manage and reduce OWASA bills and to empower low-income customers and the local agencies that serve them with information and tools to manage and reduce OWASA bills. So I have a, a, a fairly busy graph, but I think it um, makes a really important point about this program. Um, there's currently no industry benchmark um, for what defines an affordable water rate. Um, the EPA has a very loosely defined rule of thumb that um, affordable water and sewer bills are um, somewhere between two and a half, two and two and a half percent of median household income. That's water and sewer combined. The OWASA board has set um, a more, um, a lower level for the definition of an affordable water rate at one and a half percent. So our goal in our financial management policy is that we look um, we look at the water, combined water and sewer bill for the average water use um, at median household income. Um, currently, uh, we are well, we are below that one and a half percent. But George Carlin used to say, "Why do they give the air? Why do they give weather at the airport? Nobody lives at the airport. Nobody, you know, there's only a one person theoretically that lives at median household income. Um, so it doesn't really capture affordability." Um, so what you see right here on the graph, uh, focus first on the on the purposely light blue portion um, of the graph, which shows the percent of our population um, in various income buckets. And this is for town of Chapel Hill. Town of Carborough is is fairly similar. So, um, oh, turned it off. I didn't. There was no laser there. So our median household income in, in Chapel Hill is about sixty five thousand dollars. Um, per year, and in Carborough, it's $53,000, 2016. So this graph is showing that you know, our, our water and sewer bills are at 1.13% for the median household income. But when we're thinking about the affordability outreach program, go left um, on the graph, and, and you see customers whose household incomes are $25,000 or less. Um, and for those customers, water and sewer bills make up a much larger significant um, portion of their bill. And so it's those those customers that that we are looking at. And the, the reason why efficiency and conservation is important, um, this graph shows what the uh, percent of income is spent on an average water bill, which is um, our customers use on average 4,000 gallons per month. At 7,000 gallons per month, you can see, again, that left-hand side of the graph and the, um, the bar chart part of it shows the percentage of a bill a percentage of income spent on water and sewer. So you see how that can go up to, um, you know, 14% of a, of a customer's income on water and sewer at 7,000 gallons per month. If we can get that consumption under the average, it starts to become a lot more affordable. That was a belabored point, but I, I know that there's some new board members since um, you all um, adopted the, the first affordability outreach plan. So I wanted to make sure that that point was um, was uh, available to you guys. Um, we can also look at other indicators of water um, and sewer service affordability, which we look to. Um, there are three right here. Um, one is extensions of credit. So those are individual times during the year that we grant a two week extension of credit to a customer with difficulty paying for bill. So these are individual instances um, over the past three fiscal years. 
Uh, number of bill assistances provided. Um, so there are a number of entities in the community that provide bill assistance. And so these are um, instances where we have received a check from a social service agency to, to pay a portion or all of a customer's bill. And then we can look at the, the total number of cutoffs. That's ultimately what we're trying to avoid. The, yes. Are those cutoffs just for lack of payment? Yes, I believe so. So we touch back at those, um, and uh, I should probably comment on the actual trends. Um, the, since the affordability outreach program started in, in 2015, there has been some drop off, um, particularly in cutoffs, um, which has largely come from efforts to make it easier to pay your OWASA bill, either pay by text. Um, we have started a phone tree um, notification service to remind people to pay bills. So we felt like that was where kind of a lot of the slack was in, in reducing cutoffs was making sure you know people remembered. Um, number of bill assistance is provided is relatively stable um, and extensions of credit ha has fallen somewhat over the three year period. But So the plan that, that you all have in your agenda packet um, that we're proposing for the next year um, is organized into six major strategies. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time tonight on rates and billing because that's a um, a topic of frequent discussion by the board, and I know that it, that affordability is always, you know, on the forefront of your mind and in, in thinking about that. Um, and I'm going to touch on a few exciting um, strategies underneath the other, or a few exciting initiatives underneath the other strategies of information and outreach, bill assistance, water efficiency retrofits, leak identification, um, and and part of what makes them so exciting is um, that last bullet, which is the partnership. Um, and many of these initiatives have been um, developed alongside our uh, partners in the community who really understand the need um, and are coming to us now um, with ideas for programs and, and projects that, that we can do to um, work with our customers. So that's really what makes a lot of these programs exciting and, and something I'm gonna touch on here. Um, so information and outreach is one strategy. So we have the what and the how. Um, so we provide information, um, infographics. We have videos. We have a, a, a saving water, um, saving money by saving water video that's in English, Spanish, Burmese, and Karen. Uh, the Refugee Support Center was excited about um, the um, Burmese and Karen videos. Um, we distribute faucet aerators, low flow shower heads, um, and dye tablets. And these are that's the brochure um, or infographic that we share. So we developed these a couple years ago and continued to, to give them out to partners for their distribution. Um, we also provide letters to customers that receive bill assistance, um, a la the Duke Energy bill, how your water use compares to, um, we're not as sophisticated to say your neighbor, um, but you know a, a household um, of, your, of your customer class. Um, and we offer them water use assessments. Um, we really have few takers um, from that letter where most of our water use assessments come and are by referrals from our community partners. Um, and, and this past year, we launched a neighborhood conservation challenge in partnership with Chapel Hill Public Housing, um, where we distributed um, these brochures and the various hardware that I listed uh, went door to door and distributed those um, in two public housing neighborhoods um, and kind of set up a, a summertime challenge for them to reduce their water use from the past um, years. And the town of Chapel Hill awarded the winning neighborhood with a new paving project. <laughs> so I was going for like a playground or garden, but paving is good too. Um, <laughs> But we did see some savings um, in, in those houses. It's, it's not scientific. It's hard to attribute it directly to, to the program, but it was um, a really nice way to engage with the community. Um, bill assistance, as I mentioned before, there are, there are uh, quite a few entities in our community that provide direct bill assistance um, for customers. Um, Orange County Department of Social Services um, provides the, the overwhelming, or they, they provide the majority of bill assistance, but um, the Interfaith Council for Social Services is also um, a, a uh, strong um, supporter of bill assistance and our Care to Share 
um, funds com collected for Care to Share go support the Interfaith Council for Social Services and their provision of bill assistance, both direct to OWASA and in rent um, assistance. So just as we are, are limited to provide rate discounts or alternative services for customers, um, low-income customers, we also are, are limited in, in how much money we can spend on promoting care to share. So we are always looking for avenues to do it, to combine it with other ways that we are working with the community. Um, so we had Blow Thumbs article over the last year. Um, past year, um, Mr. Carwin sent a letter to all the contractors with whom we do business, encouraging them to donate directly to the IFC. We don't ask for their names. We don't want their names. It doesn't, it's not a matter of gaining our favor um, for capital projects or anything like that, but we, we do know there's an opportunity there. And, and we see an uptick of contributions in response to that letter. Um, and then we, we strongly promoted Care to Share at open house donations. The water wagon, um, you know, as, as we look to using it over the next year, will serve as a great platform to continue to promote that program. Um, contributions have been you know, relatively stable um, over the last year. Um, we brought up the point in the plan that we shared with you um, that um, about 96.5% of our on-bill contributions, I should point, you can contribute directly on your bill, which is how most customers contribute, or you can directly contribute funds to the IFC. So about 96% um, of, of the monthly contributors to Care to Share round up their bill, um, and 3.5% um, have a fixed dollar amount. So it's $1, $5, there's someone that gives $20 every month, but it's just fixed, it doesn't matter what their bill is. And, and the vast majority just round it up to the nearest dollar. Um, there is a, a misprint or um, some wrong information in, in your packet, which will get fixed in the plan before it gets updated, I think. I put in there that 65% of the revenue comes from fixed contributors. Um, flip that. 35% comes from fixed contributions. 65% comes from roundup um, customers. Um, so it's not as striking of, of a difference, but it's still quite a big difference when you look at um, that and that the median contribution of customers that Roundup is, is 21 cents. So th what we have found is that Roundup is catchy. Um, it's, an, it's a nice hook to get people to sign up. And it works if you're going to Weaver Street five times a week like I tend to do, but people pay their bill once a month. Um, and so we think that um, in this group of customers that are already committed, signed up to Care to Share, um, that we can make the appeal that um, Perhaps you know, it, invite them to give more than two dollars and fifty-two cents a year, which is a what twenty-one cents per month comes to. Um, so we would like to send thank you letters to those customers that are care to share contributors um, with a summary of their contribution last year and inviting them to um, uh, consider a, a fixed um, contribution. Um, I also lift, listed the. And I'm, I am over, um, but I want to keep going. Um, listed the, the Lift Up program, which is an exciting program that we have started to conceptualize um, recently, which Lift Up stands for Local Interventions for um, Financial, oh, I wrote it down wrong. Oh, Local Interventions for Financial Empowerment through Utility Payments. Um, and what it is, is it's a referral program to the Community Empowerment Fund, that's whose logo is here. Um, and they are financial advocates, financial, they provide financial coaching. Um, and so what OWASA would do is we recognizing that a customer maybe has um, kind of repeated difficulty paying for um, water and sewer bill. Maybe they're able to pay every other month and maybe they're not getting cut off, but uh, we kind of recognize that, that there may be a need there. And we refer them to Community Empowerment Fund. They meet with them. Um, in exchange, we, I mentioned before that we have a deferred um, payment plan of about two weeks. We would work with Community Empowerment Fund to set up a deferred payment plan for their arrears payment over a longer period of time that, that CEF and that customer um, work on. So it's an individualized repayment plan. And then we would delay any service cutoff. Um, at the end of their repayment plan, if they are successful, we would propose that they receive a, a deposit, their deposit back as kind of an incentive um, is, you know, some of the ideas that, that we have now about that. 
Um, it also would provide a really good opportunity for um, a retrofit, should we get funding for retrofit to kind of partner that as an incentive. That leads me to retrofits. So we are wanting to partner to pursue outside funding um, of retrofits for those receiving bill assistance. Uh, when we look at retro, a, a, a um, general retrofit program for all customers, it doesn't really pan out in terms of a water conservation program, primarily because you can't buy a really a high flow toilet anymore. Um, it's 1.6 gallons per flush or less. Um, and so, and that's been the case since 1994. And so the most toilets um, in place now are, are 1.6 or less. Toilets that aren't getting replaced are um, potentially the, the people that have the most difficulty paying for a bill. And so uh, what we see a lot with efficiency and technology gains is that low income customers are the ones that are, are left behind. And so we'd like to find funding um, since it would be a targeted, focused type efficiency program, outside funding. Um, Rebuilding Together of the Triangle has, is excited about partnering and in, in doing the efficiency work. Um, I'm going to run through this really, really quickly, but um, I mentioned, you know, 122 instances of bill assistance um, last year. Um, 26 of those households received bill assistance more than once, so they were going to different agencies to um, get bill assistance, um, which um, seems like a, a lot of work to me. Um, 18 of those households um, that received bill assistance used more than the average OWASA customer. So that seems like a, a, a good group to start with um, and retrofits. Um, average bill assistance amount is $120. Uh, rebuilding together estimates that they can replace toilets, identify leaks, and fix um, most leaks for $500 per retrofit, um, and we estimate it would save uh, about $15 to $30 a month for customer. Leak detection, uh, really excited about the potential that um, that Agua Vista provides us as, as we implement that. Uh, you know, in the, in the near term, before we roll out a web portal, it will be Awasha, Awasha, <laughs> Awasa initiated um, leak notification um, and then ultimately uh, once about 75 percent of the meters are upgraded um, we plan to roll out a web portal where customers will be able to look at their own water use set up own thresholds for notification but really excited about that in the meantime for the customers that are not transitioned over yet we'll continue to provide proactive desktop and field ser service for identification and follow-up regarding potential leaks didn't mean that to be ironically placed Okay, um, so thank you for letting me highlight some of the things um, that we're most excited about. Um, happy to answer any questions that you have and, and ultimately um, hope that, that we can get to a place where you all will authorize staff to move forward with the plan as proposed for the next year. Any board questions? John? I just wanted to say that uh, I think this is an extremely impressive effort. Uh, you know, it's got so many moving parts to it. Um, <clears throat> all these community partners who knew there were so many people that we were working with, you know, in terms of different volunteer groups, social service agencies. <clears throat> so that gives us a real network in the community to get ideas about what we need to do uh, to help. Uh, and also these, these in-house assessments, you know, that's very positive. Helping some people to put in uh, water conservation fixtures, you know, all of that is just tremendous. Um, and so all of these things are going, plus this literature that just helps people. I thought that was, these brochures are very well done. Just basic hints on how to uh, not waste water. <clears throat> so all of these things are going to help people, uh, you know, permanently to, to have a lower water bill. I think the thing that we're not doing a great job on is the care to share. Uh, and care to share feels a very important hole in the system because when people have financial reverses it may you know people may have a sudden financial reverse and just not be able to pay their water bill and uh, you know as uh, if you have to have your water cut off and then put back on that's a whole nother cost plus the disruption to your family and by the way I think it's so great that we're calling people up and preventing a lot of these cutoffs by making it easier to pay the bill <clears throat> but you know when you look at care to share 
Uh, I'm so embarrassed myself. I was not a participant until I got on the board. And I said, I need to take part in this. So when I first went to the website, there was a pretty serious glitch that um, was hard to get around because it said, enter your account number. And what, what your bill says is your account number is not the right number to enter. And anyway, that's been fixed. Stephen, I mentioned that to Stephen and he got that fixed. Um, also, I noticed on my bill that my monthly uh, contribution is listed under Taste of Hope. Maybe that was a previous term, but I think it would help customers, you know, understand better if, it, if, it, if that would be updated. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, it's, you know, um, most of the participants are doing the roundup, and that's why we have such a less than 50 cents a month average contribution. We can do a lot better than that. Um, and those who do contribute a, a set dollar amount, their average contribution is $5 a month. So I think that's a good goal. And I hope that we will start to really uh, market this in a very uh, energetic way. I noticed the, the little care to share promo on the bill is in little tiny blue type down at the bottom. And you know, it is there, but it's it doesn't exactly jump out at you. So. I'm looking at these uh, handouts that come in other utility bills. You know, they're separate flyers. They're very colorful. I think we could make a very appealing, uh, what do you call these things? A filler flyer or whatever. Mm -hmm. Stop. Insert. Uh, <clears throat> but I think, you know, three or four times a, day, a year we could uh, put these in the bill package. And I think we could really radically increase the number of people that uh, Contribute a fixed amount per month, and they'll just round up. And I don't, I don't think our goal should be a dollar a month. I think it could be higher than that. And maybe there's some other ideas we can come up with to promote, promote the program. But I'd like to start out with a goal that we would triple the income from share to share. Your report shows that um, of all the social service agencies that help with water bills. We're covering about a third of it, if, if I remember correctly. So why don't we just raise enough money to cover all of it and let the um, other social service agencies spend their money on food and housing and so forth. So anyway, I, I hope other board members can come up with ideas to promote the program. And I think we, if we just uh, tackle it very energetically, we could easily triple the income. Yanka. So I know the um, school system does a like a type of who gets to do the most. It's from Duke Energy, where you put in your name and you put in your bill and you get a an energy kit and it comes with a water bag and stuff like that. I think one thing when I get mine would be helpful is to how to install your stuff, how to take off the old one, how to put on the new one. So I still have mine sitting in the box because I don't know how to take off the shower head that I have. It's a low energy one, but I can't use it because I don't know how to take it off or put the new one on. My idea. Like we have the, the shower heads that we distribute do have um, that. And then I had an intern this summer. He was in the picture. I should have. He built like a home, the guy on the very far left. Um, he, he built in his backyard a piece of wood with a faucet on it and a shower head. And so we do the, when we could do public events, we can get out there with a wrench and, sh and show people because you hear that, that that is a question that comes up and people put the wrench right on it and they don't do the yes. rag around it, Heather. So uh, along with that line though, why don't we have a video of it that's linked on the OWASA website, right? right? I mean. I completely know what you're saying. When mm -hmm. I've got that situation, I go to YouTube. Because <laughs> let me tell you, there is just about every home improvement thing you would want to find on YouTube. But maybe people aren't going to go to YouTube. So can we have him do that demonstration, but have somebody tape it and put it up on the OWASA website? Does it need to be OWASA? Because we could link to a really quality one. I think Duke Energy has a, a pretty high quality one. No, that's no. fine. Okay. Have a link so that if somebody's trying to figure it out and they come to us to try to get that information, we at least can tell them where to go. Mm -hmm. 
Any other comments? Here, then Barbara. Um, a two kind of, I don't know if they're really helpful necessarily, but um, for the people who direct pay, do you offer like an annual tax summary? We do not um, currently. Um, and that would be, right now we say consult your um, tax, your accountant. Um, no, about just deductions. like a, a receipt of how much they paid. Right, but no, we don't at this point. Partially that's the, um, although a little bit late, the, the uh, desire for the timing of the letter that we would send as a thank you and both a, sum, you know, a summary of your contribution. Um, and I would suggest that we try to do that every, every year so that people can use it for their tax purposes. Yeah, un until the tax code changes again. But <laughs> um, the other thing was, this was something that occurred to me because we rented our first year, we moved into Syria in Carbro and we, my, or the owner of the house suggested to me to, to cut my, you know, utility, uh, cut the service when I was moving out and then the new person would cut it back on because he didn't know that it cost anything. I realized it because when I moved in, I was like, well, we have to pay this service fee. And I was like, well, the person before was right there. Why did we have to do this? Um, so suggestion is that when people call for canceling service, some sort of discussion about that you know, like to the person that's calling, uh, why are you doing this? And you know, some sort of, because I think this is not an isolated situation where I think a lot of our a lot of our customers are apartment holders and they might not, you know, there's a disconnect between information of, they just think they have to pay this, you know, service fee. They may not have to if they just, um, you know, have a conversation with somebody at Owasa saying, as long as nobody's running the water for a week or so, if you're moving out and, um, and I was comfortable when I, when I realized, because I was already at Owasa at this point, I was comfortable just floating it and assuming there won't be a leak in that week or two that I was, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, real quickly, we we do have a, a process around that. Uh, I'm not going to be able to tell you what it is, but I can get Denise to send around a memo or an email on that, kind of explaining because there is a way. There's some there's some pros and cons to what you're talking about, um, but there is a way that customers can avoid that fee. Uh, interesting. Okay. We have a follow up. I, I think Agua Vista is actually going to change right. how that we will manage that process. That significantly, yeah. Yes, I mean, so I would have been, I was a little uncomfortable, like, just leaving this house empty and just hoping that, you know, water, I mean, I wasn't that uncomfortable, but I was somewhat uncomfortable that, like, something wouldn't happen in those two weeks. And, but it's, you're right, with Agua, with Agua Vista, definitely. Okay. Barbara? You should. So thank you for your presentation, really good. I love the brochure. I am very guilty of brushing my teeth and the water is running. <laughs> so um, can you tell me about the community partnership and like, is, is there a way to become a community partner or how does that work? What are the, you know, what do they have to do? Kind of like how? No, it's, it's pretty informal. So I have a big mailing list. Okay. <laughs> um, and then communicate with them. We have uh, by or two meetings a year. Um, so this past year, we met. I invited everybody to meet at the Jackson Center at May, and we did in May, and we did a, a demonstration of a water use assessment, um, so they could um, kind of explain that to their community. And and I was trying to get some of them to, you know, feel empowered to to do the water use assessments. Um, and then uh, we met with them prior to it, and I should have um, mentioned that we met with them as we were developing this proposed plan. Um, and checked in with them. If, you know, some folks show up, um, and then I emailed out the draft plan to them before sending it to you all to get their feedback. So, um, really, it's just you know communication. We communicate a couple times a year, um, and then you know many times you know I get called throughout the year. So if 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 you think that an organization would be good to add to the list, I'd be more than happy to yeah, reach have four. out. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you the information. Thank you. For sure. When, when you do have a meeting like that, I, I'd like to see if I can fit in my schedule to join one of those. Maybe just send an email to everybody, just letting, me, letting everybody know. I'd like to have one in the spring, um, particularly with the entities that provide funding 
uh, or bill assistance um, to explain. We've, we've worked very closely with um, Orange County Department of Social Services um, and IFC, obviously, but some of the churches in the area, um, we, we haven't. So just to give them the information that we have so that they can share and, and talk to them about water use assessments um, so that they have a good understanding of that. But, um, I will notify the, the board when that meeting is coming up. Um, I'll be happy to have you all join us and then we'll probably meet again at the end of next year to discuss a plan. Yeah, okay. yes. So um, in utilizing the assistance that customers are needing, is it specific times of the year such as summer when school's out or is it any time? It's like, is there a trend? Is there a time like, okay, December, we require more assistance or June, people require more assistance paying their bill? I would wanna look at the data and make sure I was accurately reflecting um, what the information is. My, my general understanding is there's more, there's an uptick in January um, after the holidays um, is typically the, the peak month of assistance that we see. John? Yeah, I, I uh, want to start out by saying thank you to our partners and to our contributor, the Care to Share contributors. Uh, I, I think that's really what makes the wheels go round here. And I think this is a terrific plan. I, I've, as you know, been on the board a while and I've seen it develop from almost nothing to this. And I, I just think that's tremendous progress that, you know, so hats off to the team for that. I. Just a couple of things that really stood out to me in, in this version of the plan, the goals and metrics, I thought they were really clear and uh, relevant. Uh, for example, measuring the number of cutoffs is like, wow, okay, yeah, that's right where the rubber meets the road. You know, if we can reduce that, it's a, that's a terrific measure of our impact. Um, I, I thought it was a great idea to send the thank you letters to the care to share contributors and invite them to become John's style of contributors of a higher fixed dollar amount and uh, add in there Rashir's idea about the tax letter and wow, what a nice package. And uh, also, also Jeff's idea, just want to throw that into the record that he emailed to us about making the default a fixed contribution rather than the roundup. And it sounds like that's consistent with how you're looking at this, so great. Um, and uh, one last idea to throw in on you, you mentioned the report mentions that uh, we tell customers about social agencies when they ask about uh, or indicate that they're having trouble. I wonder if we could uh, tell customers proactively about that when we know they're having trouble instead of, and, and maybe I'm drawing too fine a line and, and taking too literally what the report said, but to me, there might be an opportunity to be a little more proactive there. And, uh, and then a couple of questions. We, um, we mail information about assessments to customers who sought financial assistance. That's another great idea. How many, you said, uh, the report said we mailed 100 letters. I'm curious how many assessment requests we got from that 100 letters? This past year. Uh, no. Okay, all right, thank you. What I was, was just what curious. What was your question, was that? They, they, uh, customers who had gone to get uh, assistance from one of these social agencies, they mailed letters to them basically saying, hey, we do assessments at your home. And I was just curious how many customers sort of grabbed onto that. No, the, there's not, I don't think there's a table on that. The, the answer is zero in the past year. And previous year we had, we had a couple. All the water use assessments came um, be a referral of partner agencies um, that they they were working with a um, a household and you know kind of advanced um, water use assessment as a good resource for them. Um, and so my hope is in working with the providers of bill assistance that in as they're providing bill assistance assistance they can reference a water use assessment and so there's kind of another uh, way that they're being informed about that. And my last question is. Uh... It's very frustrating and disappointing that we don't get much interest from the owners of the apartment buildings. And we know that uh, is it roughly 40 or 50 percent of Chapel Hill is renting something like that. So I, I don't know, maybe my numbers are off there, but a lot of people rent at apartment buildings. So are you still exploring or sort of working with 
partnerships to crack this difficult nut, or is that something you're just going to have to give up on? Thank you. I won't give up on it. It's this. <laughs> the, we had a really great partner this year in the waste production um, partners, which is a group of retired engineers that provide water use um, um, audits free of charge. And um, they had funding from Duke Energy to provide water audits in our, our region for commercial, industrial, institutional customers, which is really their kind of bailiwick. And I strongly encourage them towards the multifamily master meter customers um, in line with our affordability outreach program. And we, uh, we really worked hard to, to get information out. We emailed multiple times. Jeremy called every single one of them, inviting them to, to participate in this. We had one complex take, take us up on it. Um, and luckily, it wasn't too late, and Waste Reduction Partners was able to provide a water audit to the um, Chapel Hill Carborough City Schools. Um, so we were able to still kind of benefit from that. But it, it was difficult to get them interested in a, in a water use assessment. I won't give up. If you have any ideas, I'll take them. Ray? I, too, uh, agree with John that uh, reading through the plan, uh, very robust, a lot of pieces. I'm very impressed. And you do all this in 25% of your working hours. That's that's very efficient. That's a lot, <laughs> lot, lot of work. That's a lot of work. I'm very impressed. Have a good and I also drink, agree with John Morris that the... Uh, Care to share funding priority. It should be a priority to increase that funding. Uh, uh, and I'm not on the OASA system, but I would like to contribute. I mean, but I didn't, you know, until I was on the board, I didn't know anything about it. Are there people out, out there that that can be reached for one reason or another? I mean, flyers, can we distribute flyers in our neighborhood or something like that? Mm -hmm. we, we certainly have. We have flyers I'd be happy to share with you. Okay. Um, and I definitely work with a great team. A couple, and couple of kids across partners. the street, I'd be happy to distribute them. And Thank you. Thank you. The, oh, I'm sorry. The one question is the uh, retrofit program. That's just in the idea phase, or are you do, actually doing retrofits now? Or We're not doing or somebody... retrofits. We did, we did six retrofits in the pilot phase of this program, um, which is, I believe, in 2000 and. 15, early 2015, with funding from uh, the Interfaith Council for Social Services um, and Wilkinson Supply, um, donated um, the toilets. We did six retrofits. Um, so we are, have been working to attract funding um, to, to fund those retrofits, but I still have a couple leads in the coming year. Um, but you know, we, we're grant, local grant foundation and as well as some local government. Can funding. the funding for that perhaps, can the Care to Share program be expanded to help fund some retrofits as well? Is that something maybe for the future? John mentioned earlier about that um, the Care to Share funds are meeting a, a third of the bill assistance need. I want to, want to clarify is a third of the bill assistance that the IFC provides. Um, and so it would be a great challenge to, to fund everything that the, the, the IFC is providing in bill assistance and, and go above and beyond that. Heather? Given that um, especially Cane Creek is used by a lot of non Owasa area people, would it be worthwhile to try to figure out a way to ask for donations at the lake? So they're coming in to use our fantastic fishing, and we give them the option to either round up or round up to the nearest, like five or ten dollar amount. You know, so if it's thirty-seven bucks, maybe we ask them if they want to round up to forty. And the rest of it's a donation for people in our area. Meaning. Any other questions? Um, the staff is asking us to approve the uh, uh, plan and authorize them to proceed as they have indicated. Can I have a motion? I'll make that motion as written on page 3.1. Okay. Is there a second? Ray made the second. Uh, Barbara seconded it. And John, you have a question? Or Just in terms of discussion, uh, I hope that, Mary, you'll let the board review this letter that goes out to Care to Share contributors 
you know, we might be able to think of some other ideas to go into that. And uh, personally, I hope it's a very vigorous uh, invitation to people to uh, to make a fixed dollar amount donation. It just occurs to me too that <clears throat> it would be much easier to provide a tax letter if people are making a set dollar amount per month as opposed to trying to add up little bits and pieces of, from rounding up. But maybe that would be an incentive for people to, uh, you could say that if, if people contribute a fixed amount per month, we can provide a tax letter if, if that's possible. Okay, uh, I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed nay. Um, thank you very much. Um, we go to agenda item number four, key performance indicator selection for future review. Mary, you're still on board. I'm still here. <laughs> I don't have any slides for this, um, but Andy will get mad at me if I don't go to the, there. Um, so um, the board asked to the opportunity to discuss what um, the topic for your next KPI deep dive would be. Um, and ask for uh, the staff's recommendation of what we think might be um, a good indicator for that. Um, we, we nominate accounted for water as a percent of water pumped. Um, and, and to do that um, as in providing you all um, the uh, fiscal year 2018 water audit, uh, which we have begun to do. Um, so to look to September 2018 to provide you all a report out of that. But I'm mainly just here as a resource to support your discussion, and I attach the most recent KPI report for your reference. Any questions or comments from the board? Any directions for the staff for what to look at? Sure. I'll be happy to motion that we accept staff's recommendation of the KPI as uh, uh, the water. Uh, Water utilization or accounted for water as a percent of water pump. Thank you, Mary. I second. Okay, we have a, a first by John and a second by Heather. Uh, vote. All those in favor Wait, say. I'd, oops, I'd like to make another question. motion if possible. Okay. I'd like to make another motion. Can I oh, do okay. this one? Okay. I'd, I think we should do, I would like to see uh, a deep dive in um, safety personally. Second. Second. We're going to take a vote on the first one. And all those in favor of that one say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. How many deep dives can we do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As many as you want, Mr. Cohen says. It, 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 it took a lot of staff effort to pull together the, the last one. They all wouldn't be like that. Um, and I also to make the point that by design, you guys have some deep dives. The energy management plan will be before you in a month. So, you know, Jeff's, you know, wanted to look at, at natural gas use. So there are some just embedded deep dives um, already, but. I, I want to say, Rishi, I, I support your idea. I really like your idea. And the only thing, the reason I stuck with my motion, it's only because I know we're hiring a safety manager and it might be useful to have that person on board either to help prepare for that or at least to sort of participate in that conversation. That's a good point, actually. I agree that it's very important, too, to have a, to do this deep dive on the safety. Should we do one per quarter or what, what, was, what were we... What did we discuss? Maybe we should do the. We haven't discussed it as far as I recall. Maybe we should do the water loss next and then the safety. I, th I think we said actually. one every six months is, is probably what we said at a prior board meeting. Okay. Call with the motion on the second question for safety. Actually, oh. can I? I'm going to withdraw. I think this is a very valid point. I'd, I'd rather now stick with the first. Okay. All right. Uh, is the second okay with that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that one's been pulled. All right. So we do the one that John and Mary said. <laughs> <laughs> you caught on to that real quick. <laughs> okay. We're going to move on then. Uh, I believe it's number five. Uh, diversity and inclusion program progress report. 
Stephanie Glasgow, the Director of Human Resources and Safety. Hello, I'm not going to take up too much of your time tonight, but I am super excited to provide an update on our diversity and inclusion efforts since September. Uh, we have successfully completed our organizational assessment with employees and the board. Uh, we're very happy about that. Our consultant Visions Incorporated shared the assessment results with the diversity uh, resource group, the diversity recruitment group, the diversity leadership group, and I know they had a couple of sessions with the board as well to provide those results. Additionally, and very importantly, I would say that we had well attended employee sessions where the results were provided and we did get a lot of good feedback from employees uh, at that time. Our employees are aware of the board's involvement as well as those three groups I just mentioned and their um, the things that I hear back is that they're very appreciative of the full commitment of the entire organization for this initiative itself. So staff throughout the organization uh, is working on action plans for those areas of improvement, and we will provide that to the board on April the 12th. Other important work that has taken place since September. Yes, sir. Did you have a question? Oh, okay. Other important work that has taken place uh, Visions is working with a diversity resource group as well as the human resources department uh, to review all of our current recruitment processes and practices. Uh, we've offered two core skills training sessions. Uh, Durham Tech came in and taught those to our employees. You know, people who were interested in attending were able to do that. Um, as you know, the board has approved our changes to the merit pay system, which allows employees to move more quickly through their pay range based on their performance. And we continue as always to engage with agencies and organizations to get the word out when we have a recruitment. And so I'm happy to answer any questions that you ha may have, but basically tonight, we're just asking for the board's feedback on the things you like about the diversity and inclusion plan and the things that you think we can change or do better. Questions, comments, John? These uh, career fairs, what would they typically be like? Are these college? When you say we engage with agencies and things? No, um, let's see. Um, there was Because there uh, are career fairs that we go to, but there are other things that we do as well. So it's not just limited to career fairs. Well, I was specifically asking about attended 10 <laughs> career fairs. Yes, what, what, those what? are career fairs. So what is a typical career fair like? Um, we have been to many. Uh, the last one that I attended was at Shaw University. And actually it was in one place in the morning. We had to pick up and move all our stuff to somewhere else in the afternoon to a different department. Um, some of them I attended one that WRAL and Raleigh put on at the McKimmon Center. I think that was the one before Shaw. Some are community colleges, mm -hmm. um, et cetera. Okay, right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Stephanie, uh, keep it rolling. It's all good stuff we're doing. Um, I And then secondly, I appreciate the value of uh, sort of the broad training and development program that we've done. You know, we, we selected a couple of areas for the organization. I, I think it's valuable not only because the organization learns skills, but people like to know they're developing and the company's investing in them. So uh, just to question about the uh, the communication and service excellence training that we did at Durham Te Tech. What kind of feedback do we have any from employees around that? They loved it. Um, the instructor, it was the same instructor for both, but they were about a month apart. Um, they really liked that she had so much energy about it and she really did a good job, very knowledgeable in that area. Um, they loved the topics themselves, um, have given me some ideas for some additional topics that they'd like to see. So it's been very successful, I would say. Great, thank you. Barbara. Yeah, so um, where are we um, in the process as far as the use of the, the consultant and how much farther do we have? Um, we do have a little bit ways to go. So okay. the next steps, as I mentioned, that we're in the process of going over the recruitment um, processes that mm. we have. Um, and this is a deep dive. This is we're getting into everything from how we interview, how we advertise, how we um, do our panels, what we do once people get here. So that's, you know, extensive. We still, as I mentioned, on the 12th of April, are going to provide the board 
those areas of improvement, what our plan is to correct those things. So that's still work that would be going on. Um, once Visions and the HR department and the diversity resource group um, finds out what we can do to improve the recruitment process, we're going to go through all those steps again and, and inform and have sessions with the board and each three sessions and then employee sessions. So it'll be like another report like we just received on the recruitment aspect of it. Then comes training. We're going to do mandatory supervisory training and we're going to do training for all employees. So I would anticipate that while we expect some training to take place through the spring and into the, you know, the summertime, that probably this will go on through next fiscal year with the, um, the consultant. Okay. So I have actually have a meeting with her tomorrow and she just texted me as I was sitting over there and said she got called into session. So <laughs> Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you, you very much. So uh, my comment is, when I was looking at the assessments, it seems like people were being honest. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at prior assessments not done by an outside consultant, it seemed like people were not being as honest and open as they could have been. So my, I don't know if it's comment or question is, at the end of all of this, is there going to be like another assessment to see where we are and if we've improved on the areas that we need to improve. I know some of the things I saw, I was like, okay, this makes sense, I understand. And some of the other things I saw, I was like, oh, I was kind of shocked by some of the, the things I read because it didn't seem as such to me like we were good in that area and we still need an improvement, if that makes sense. Sure. And I think another assessment is a great idea. I don't know that it's in the plan or that it's been approved at this point, but yeah, I think that's a fabulous idea. John or Barbara? Uh-huh, go ahead. Your phone. Uh, well, you are establishing some measures of success, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I imagine you'll consider whether a future assessment should be part of that. Mm -hmm. Right? You Absolutely. Are, that is a part of the work plan, right? It it's is. to establish measures to monitor. Yes. Okay, thank you. And Barbara? And I guess when all this has concluded with the consultant and we have our final assessment or whatever we end up with, I guess another thing that I want to know is how do we keep things moving? You know, what are we going to do to keep things moving? Who's going to be responsible for that? How mm -hmm. is that? What is that going to look like, you know, once Visions is finished? Yes. So out of the gate, we established those three groups, the diversity leadership group, which which is are the directors. And it's our job to make sure that it, it, it stays forward motion and forward motion. The diversity resource group, which we expect that to continue long after the consultant is gone. They're the champions in the work areas that are talking about diversity and inclusion and making sure that you know we're doing what it is that we're supposed to be doing. And then the diversity uh, recruitment group, and they'll be assisting HR, the recruitment panels, et cetera, in making sure that we continue all the things on just the recruitment side of it. You had representation from each group. So Millie Zeno Chapman um, and Rosa Valdez spoke for the diversity resource group. Nick spoke for the Nick Rogers for the diversity recruitment, and Todd for the leadership group. Thank you. So piggybacking off of that, I know sometimes people's roles change. Mm -hmm. So as people's roles are changing and they're advancing or even leaving the organization, are there going to be backups for? that to make sure that the group is yes. kind of like up to speed on. Yes. As you know, um, John Kevin Emi is leaving our organization and so he was not able to attend a session yesterday. Monica, who is interim, she's already on there, but we pulled in another um, represent representative from the wastewater treatment plant because of the turnover, James Blackwell. So we're trying to make sure those slots are, are full at all times. Any other questions, comments? Yes. Oh, I've forgotten about them tonight. <laughs> is, there, is there any comments from from the public? I don't see any. All right. Uh, thank you very much. 
I don't believe you were asking for any direction. No, no but thank okay. you so much for your involvement and your support of this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now we uh, will review the uh, board's work session. Um, two items that I wanted to bring up to the board. Um, one is we talked after the uh, last part of the training session about getting back together and talking about board procedure, uh, about inclusion uh, of people's comments, and also about um, how uh, we um, uh, orient uh, new, new board members. Um, and the feeling I got was that the board wanted to, to get back uh, to do that. Um, so I'm checking in with you. Did I read you right? And do we want to include visions into um, that conversation uh, or organize that discussion? And also, there's other things that you saw that we didn't uh, discuss. Right. Regarding the orientation, I mentioned that uh, the orientation that staff provides new incoming board members is, is excellent. And I wouldn't suggest that we do anything there, but the, there's no orientation by the board for new members. And perhaps that we should try to, and I'm not sure what the, what, what the action items on that <coughs> orientation agenda would yeah. be, but, but it's just very, very difficult to come in and understand what all the, what pending issues are from the board's perspective. And, and how things have gone in the, in maybe just, you know, kind of help us come up to speed. So I like along the lines of that, of having like a board buddy, you know, maybe someone who, yeah, anyway, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to record show you, it was your friend Barbara who brought that up. <laughs> Okay, um, so we want to get back together. So the key question is, do we want vision involved in that discussion? I see one nod. I would think so. I, I, I they help me sometimes, um, probably more than some. But they ask a question, and you quite don't have the handle on. It. So I'll ask. Um, I'm just going to take consensus board and. Uh, is there a time that's easier for us all to get together than, than another time? I like to do it, you know, before uh, Barbara leaves the board. Well, we're not kicking you off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't even see any suggestions. We'll ask the clerk to do it all for us. And uh, just m months, what days? Uh, any guidance we can give uh, the clerk? I think it is. How about the uh, Thursday in between Thursdays? Uh, it always Thursday. seems, you know, we've got Thursday aside. Okay, Thursday before Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Hmm? You got to go to planning board meetings too. You're t you're something. <laughs> I, <think. laughs> I would suggest just doing the doodle puzzle with get vision. This vision is going to have to be involved. Yeah, we're going to have to involve visions yeah. too. That so worked in the past. And... Okay. All right. Uh, second item is um, typically in April. Um, in the work session, uh, we appoint the nomination committee. Last year, we did the full board, and we also set up some guidelines about setting one-year term limits. Do we want to have a rediscussion of, of any of that stuff um, on a formal basis, or we just want to go ahead and have the um, stay with the policy as it well it was is a practice? Excuse me, it's not a policy change stay with the practice and we have the full board make denominations like we did last year. Anyway. Yeah, it was just a practice. Yeah, it was, so it wasn't even written into policy, let alone in granite. Any feelings about how it's working or we want to continue it or 
can you just can you describe the policy what it was and what it is now well i, I was going to suggest you got that cold. we have two new board members who have no idea what we're talking no. about and, there you go. and so yeah. for that reason alone we ought to at least bring it forward and, okay we'll just yeah. have a discussion about it okay all right so if the Ed would put that back on the agenda. Um, are there any requests by board uh, committees or board members um, about items? Oh, yes, John. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I noticed on the um, upcoming work schedule that uh, Ruth is going to bring before us some ideas about uh, land management policy for our lands out around Cane Creek. Uh, <clears throat> so I believe that was on the schedule for May. And, <clears throat> I'm, you know, the... That's something that didn't work well the first time we tried it. You know, that was before any of us board members were around, but uh, that was a uh, kind of a route apparently. And so I think we really need to think carefully about the best kind of community uh, <clears throat> consultation process. So I think the NERTS committee needs to meet on that and, and sort of ease into it. We may want to talk to some other experts on land management, maybe like Duke Forest and the Nature Conservancy and see how they've dealt with issues like this. So <clears throat> um, I, I very strongly believe we need to do a good job of forest management and I hope to be very a good strong advocate for that. But in order to do that, we have to have a very good community process. And so I, I'm basically saying, I don't want the staff just to bring us a plan and say, this is it. You know, I want us to take part in developing the plan and consult with various people and deal with it over a period of months so that we're uh, <clears throat> sure that we have the right way to consult with the community. It's very complicated because there are uh, dozens of tracts of land. All of them are uh, have different kinds of management needs to get from where they are now to where they need to be. So it's, it's about the most complicated thing to get public input on that you could imagine. Any questions, comments? Kevin? At least from what I remember Ruth presenting to us, um, she recognized that. So what she's going to present to us on in May is actually the draft plan of how she would go about that process, which I think is what it is. Rather than having a nerds meeting, I might want to see what the plan was first and who else she had talked to um to determine if we needed to have a separate meeting about it well what my view is that um uh, <clears throat> i'd like to hear from ruth how she's going to go about developing the plan before we see the plan and and i would like to take part in developing the plan just because um uh, you know i've been through a lot of thorny public consultation issues in my earlier career and i think it's really worth a lot of we all need to understand it and be comfortable with it yeah, is this a something for the communication committee or for NERDS? Sounds like the public I, input is what. Yeah, but I, I think it really is about <clears throat> the forestry management issues. So I, I would urge it to be part of the NERDS committee task. Uh, the, the other committee may want to take part also, but it has to spring out of understanding what these forest issues are. Ed, do you... Uh, know what the direction of Ruth's presentation is going to be um, for the board? If it, is it just a, a process identification or is it the plan itself? Yeah, it would be the draft plan of, of how we would propose to approach that. Um, you know, we certainly don't object if the will of the board is to do some of that work up front in consultation with the committee or even the, the full board in a work session prior to May to, to perhaps to share and outline some of the key objectives. I mean, you know, it's, it's, we're happy to do it, whatever's most comfortable for you. Ruth's not here tonight. And Mary, I don't know if you want to comment on that, but, uh, but we're fine with John's suggestion. We're also fine proceeding and giving you the benefit of, of our proposal and, and then working it from there. So whichever you prefer, we're totally fine with. Um, other wishes of the board members? So I guess the question is, you want staff to work with nerds or work with the whole the whole board in a workstation? Preliminary discussion. 
for sure. Uh, personally, I'd like to maybe maybe we can get Ruth's input. In, you know, next next meeting or the meeting after, of just what her process is going to be, who she's going to be consulting. Um, I think that would be a good enough start for me. I, I don't know. Could we handle that through like a an email there? Or that satisfy? If that works for the board, that's Does fine that with us. Again, board? it's we're happy to work it. Um, however you care to. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I certainly agree with John that uh, a key element of success is thoroughly, properly engaging the community, doing our best, sharing information, you know, receiving feedback, addressing that, and so. And also, what the actual plan, how, how you come up, come up how, right. how you develop it. Right. Would you like that in the email or put it on a work session? Or? Yeah. I, I guess I feel it needs to be um, either discussed in committee, maybe over a period of several months, or and, and or in a work session. I guess personally what I don't want to have is to have a finished plan plopped down on us, you know, with no um, opportunity to kind of think about it over a period of time and make sure that it's something that we're comfortable going into battle on. Well, there certainly isn't any time sensitivity driving us on this, so, I, you know, we certainly wouldn't proceed until the board's fully comfortable that it's mm -hmm. thorough, it's it's on target, it's mm -hmm. implementable, it'll it'll be effective and um why don't we ask um you to have a sort of a preliminary discussion and we do it at a at a work a work session and then we can decide if we want to send it to, excuse me, nerds or how we want to proceed. That's okay. That's a good start. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, and of course we want the benefit of, and Ruth's going to be on a much deserved vacation for a week and a half, and okay, and she's also cranked up on the long range water supply plan and other things. So I also need to okay have the ability to come back and maybe reschedule slightly, but okay, um, yep, we'll be happy to do it. All right, thank you. Uh, and John, did you have a second item? No, no thanks. Okay, no. oh that John. <laughs> uh, one, one thing interesting, I just saw in the news last week related to your topic, uh, this topic, is uh, Chapel Hill Public Library is having a prescribed burn sometime in February, March, around on the forest property around the library. They're using it as a, a demonstration, science demonstration. They had a class today I just saw in the news. I went and checked the articles. So, uh, I, I might encourage uh, Ed, your staff yeah, we're to. We're on that. Okay. Yeah, we yeah cool. That also, um, and yeah. Is, is is on that. Yeah, yeah. Audubon Society's plugged in in that, so it's mm -hmm. uh, anyway a, a good opportunity for us. Yeah, absolutely. As a very minimum, to get some lessons learned about you know, reactions to it and uh, education. Uh, but separately, that was is uh, I I have a suggestion for the board that we uh, do a communication at a board meeting, in particular one, the second one of the month, related to Agua Vista. I think there's a lot of things going on. It's pretty cool stuff. It's really important to us. And I, as far as I can tell when I glance at the agenda, I don't see anything uh, before the summer. I don't know. Maybe there's something in the fall. But I, I just feel like it's a relevant topic to the community, and there's enough going on that it would be kind of a cool update for us and for the community. At every second meeting? No, no, no. Mean? I'm just saying plan one sometime between now and uh, let's say May or June. Okay. Ed, you got that? Okay. Any other suggestions? Okay. And Ed, do you, uh, does the staff have any? No, sir. Okay. Can you take us to the next two meetings, please? One, uh, let's see, agenda page. <laughs> Six three is um, six two and six three is the agenda for the, the next meeting, February twenty second, seven p.m. at Chapel Hill Town Hall. Uh, and I won't go through those items. Um, you'll see number eight, the word tentative, in front of consider resolutions to authorize staff. We, we you can scratch scratch out tentative, but it is something we'd like to um, share with you all. And just as a reminder, I'm at the, the management conference and will be uh, out of town that evening and, and you'll have Todd Taylor in my chair and of course the whole team. Um, again, 
you know, the key items are, are number four through eight on agenda page 6.3. And in the meeting which follows, uh, your agenda, page 6.4, is our March 8th meeting uh, in this room at 6 p.m. Uh, and you know, key items there will be your first look at budgets and perhaps rates for next fiscal year. Can we go back to the previous meeting? Certainly. Item number four, uh, is that about four, four days? No, that, that's about the perfluorinated compounds. Um, oh, you know, that, like there's okay. Now I know. Right. Um, you know, we've done some sampling and testing of our own, and and what we'll be doing is you know sharing information about that topic in general, some information about Awasa specific resources, and then um, perhaps work in collaborating with other partners and agencies, you know, to address this moving forward. So, okay. you know, we think that that televised meeting at town hall will be an important opportunity to to talk about that. Thank you. And for the March 8th meeting, um, in light of the Human Resource Committee's work uh, recently, that item five, discuss revisions to retiree health for new hires and um, deferred comp. Um, we'll, we expect to move that from March 8th to uh, one of the April board meetings to give the committee more time to, to work with staff on options. So. We do not expect that to be on the March 8th agenda. But in early March, the HR committee, as Barbara noted earlier, will be meeting. Any questions? Something sure. just popped in my mind. It's not related to this, this calendar, but I do think that the um, when we have those, you know, the uh, news stories and communications, mm -hmm. um, I, I like them and I, I really like them. But one thing that I realize because I see it on my work emails is we're not getting any of the like what's going on at the national level, what's going on with EPA level that would affect drinking water, would affect affect our utility. Um, and I realize that, that that for example, there's a lot of information about fluoridation and Supreme Court's been listening about talking about it. So it's, I think it's something that we should also include in our newsletter or news stories some sort of national level uh, sort of paper. Yeah, I think one way we, we could approach that in, in the professional associations to which we belong, um, occasionally they provide such updates on a national level and, you know, it, it would certainly be easy to share that information you know, with the full board rather than just highlighting or forwarding topics that we think of particular interest. You know, again, we can just share those those newsletters, so I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Okay, uh, are there any questions or comments about the 12 month calendar? Anything we missed or didn't know it was on there? Looks like we're good. Ed, you want to wrap it up with? Certainly, um, we'll address the, the various and very in, uh, insightful comments and suggestions regarding the affordability outreach program and also appreciate you acknowledging Mary T's enthusiasm and passion for the project. You know, what you saw tonight as we see every day at work and, and a lot of her coworkers are um, much the same. So, but anyway, we'll, um, we'll be addressing your suggestions. Uh, Ruth will report back about uh, her work and her plan regarding community engagement for forestry management uh, for discussion at a future meeting. Uh, we'll also schedule an Aqua Vista update this spring, for probably at a televised meeting, so we can um, get exposure that way. And, um, and as the chair just requested, we'll uh, look for opportunities to share more of the national news that uh, affects our um, industry. All right, I have a note here that we're requesting to have a closed session for the purpose of discussing the personnel matter. Can we have a motion and a second to do that? So move. Second. Okay. Moved by Heather, second by Inca. All, right. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed? All right, we'll go into closed session. Uh, why don't we take a five minute break?
Yeah, we'll meet here. Thank you.